I'm Michael Real, and this is RealerBenews.com. We are celebrating the success of Vincent Ward, one of the stars of the popular television show, The Walking Dead. What a great night tonight. Indeed. Indeed. Wonderful night, man. The show was awesome. I knew it was going to be an awesome show tonight, and I'm just glad everybody decided to come out and join us. What is it like being a part of this hit show, Walking Dead? You know what? Honestly, I had never even seen or heard of the show before. No, I, I take that back. I had heard of it because two years ago, a friend of mine was telling me, you should be on this show called The Walking Dead. I was like, okay. Everybody always say I should be on the show. But when I was filming it, I had never seen it until they had the marathon. But the, the, the best thing about it is getting to know the, the guys, the cast, before even watching the, the previous shows. To me, the, the previous shows had nothing to do with me anyway, so I got to know the people for who they really are. How did you garner this role, um, which has really catapulted your career? How did you garner this role? Just audition. Mm -hmm. Just going very like everybody else, went to audition, and it was, the, the show was so secretive that even when we had audition, we auditioned as different characters or fake characters. So it was like they just made up a script and made up a character's name. And I didn't know what my character's name was until I got got there the first day. And the first day they actually gave me a fake script. <laughs> so it's like, just in case. How are we supposed to learn the script? And then they gave us the real script. So everything's really secretive about the show. Signing the papers every, every week, saying we can't say anything. So I had to walk around five months without saying anything to anybody. And I don't want to spoil it, and I don't want to spoil it and spoil my reputation sure. and mess up anything. You know, you never want to burn any bridges, so I kept my mouth shut. That's easy. Sure. Be quiet. <laughs> Just go to the bank. I'm going to the bank. I'm quiet. Yeah, exactly. Sure. So. This is a long way from the Midwest. Mm -hmm. How did you get to this point uh, in your life to be on a hit show well, you know, coming out of the Midwest? It took time. It took time. I actually feel like this is like the beginning of my acting career. The first thing I did in Ohio was um, the movie Traffic with, uh, uh, what's his name? Mike, uh, got his last name. Traffic. Yeah, the movie Traffic. And started doing some plays. Well, that's actually the first thing I did. I started doing some plays. I was just walking down the street one day, went to a theater, watched a play. I'd never even seen a play before. I was like, okay, this is interesting. I said, I can do this. A couple weeks later, they had auditions for that same play company. I went to audition, got a part. Started doing more plays. Then I got a lead role in an independent film called The Symbol of Love. And then that's when I got the part in traffic. And after that, I said, I'm going to LA. And this was me sitting in, you know, in Columbus, Ohio at that time. Moved back home to Dayton, Ohio. Stayed with my parents for a few months. Uh, saved my money. And I came on out to LA. You know, it's not like I ever like really dreamed about being an actor. I'm, I compete, and anything I do, I try to be the best at it. So I was like, I am not going to be the weak link. And that goes anything. back to your to your sports. Yeah, me your playing sports basketball. Career. Sure. You know, I was the first first person at my high school to ever start four years on varsity basketball. And I used to be in a dance group. I mean, in a rap group, I was one of the dancers in there. I'm six four. My dance partner was six five, and we used to win all the dance contests. Uh -huh. So I used to combine the basketball and the dancing together. My coach hated it, but the fans loved it. So I always thought that's where like the entertaining part came from. So, yeah. <laughs> so the people back home have to be proud? Oh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's funny because a lot of times guys would call me, be like, you know, they'd see me on something. They'd be sitting there with their girlfriend, you know, especially when I was on Bring It Out of House. Sure. And I would get all these phone calls like, hey, man. Tell my girl you know me. Then I get on the, then she get on the phone like, yeah, I know him. You know, so it, it's it's cool. It's cool. You know, just people respecting what you're doing and your grind. You know, every day on uh, Facebook I would say rise and grind. That's just to encourage everybody. You know, I would say rise and grind is not just a saying, but it's a way of life. I don't care what you're doing in your life. I don't care if you just whatever. Rise and grind. Get up and do something to better your life every day, or do get up and better somebody else's life. Be nice to somebody, make somebody's day some kind of way, and I believe in that. Are you, lack of better words, surprised um, by the success of this show? 
and the interest in your character? I'm, I'm, I am surprised because I didn't know anything about the show. I didn't realize the show was that popular. But once I kept hearing stuff, and by me having faith, it's like, okay, God has opened the door for me. And it's time for me to take advantage of it. And, you know, a lot of times God brings people together. And it's just like with my, my PR, Dana. You know, somebody told her or told me about her and told her about me. And it's just like my, my manager in, in Atlanta, Keila Starr, somebody told me about her. So anytime somebody has told me or told somebody about, you know, each other, things have worked out. So I have an agent in, in um, Atlanta and I have one here in, uh, in L.A. We really don't see a lot of African Americans, if you will, mm -hmm. in sci-fi thrillers, in sci-fi roles. Let's go back to uh, you know, Star Wars and we had the Chewbacca character, but he had a mask on. Mm -hmm. Then we had um, but it Earl was, It was still working. Still working. Then we <laughs> had... Uh, uh, Jay, uh, help me with the guy who played Star Vader. We don't. Uh, Earl James, Earl Jones. Er, yeah, Mr. Jones. But he had a mask on, but mm -hmm. his presence was obviously felt. Man. But here you are, no, you're un, no mask, mm -hmm. and you're in one of the top sci-fi uh, productions in, in this in this new era of uh, television and in this new era of media. Yeah, it's, I think it's all about timing and your season. You know, I. I've worked hard every time I, I do a lot of plays as well. Sure. And any time I'm doing a play or movies or TV, I give everybody a hundred percent. I don't go in there with no ego, you know, saying I, I've done this, 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 this. I don't pretend that I know everything. I'm, I'm too humble and I'm too hungry to mess up my blessing. So it's all about timing in your season. And I feel this is actually my season. So the ingredients are grind, Patience. <laughs> patience. You have to have patience, and you have to know how to take, you know, people telling you no. Or or if you go in, I used to be like this, I go in, have an audition, I'd be like, oh, I killed that, I killed that. But then I don't get a call back or anything, and then you sit there like, oh, you know, you hurt. But then you have to get over it. You know, you definitely have to be patient, you have to be humble, you have to have, you have to have faith, man. And that's all I can really say, that's what I live by. You know, I'm from Dayton, Ohio, and I'm just, I'm not out here just for myself, but I'm out here for my family, and I'm out here for my city. You know, I always want to be the guy that somebody like, well, if he did it, I can do it. A lot of responsibility goes with being on television mm -hmm. and being on the top show. And I'm ready to take on that responsibility. I really am. You know, I hear these stories about, like, you know, people who say, well, I'll be eating dinner, I won't sign the autographs. This is what you signed up for. Mm -hmm. If you go to a charity event, you're supposed to go to the charity event and be not sure. be, be exactly be, you know, be don't affable. Be, don't be anti-social. We they brought you out here to sign autographs, to take pictures, to shake hands. If you didn't want to do it, you should have never came. And I'm ready to take on that responsibility a hundred percent because I know once I get there, I'm gonna do right because it can be taken away just as, just like it was given to me. With those with those life lessons learned, you must be enjoying this. Tremendous, uh, tremendous role. I'm, I'm enjoying it, but I actually feel like this is the beginning of my career. I've been in some, I've been in a few things. Sure. But I feel like this is the beginning. And I honestly said, today was the beginning. Yeah, this is the fourth episode, but I know for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, this week doors will, will open. And I'm claiming that. And it was, it was a confirmation today when I actually went to church. Everything that I've been thinking about these last 12 years, everything I, I've been talking about, everything my family's been telling me, my friends, was all brought up today at church with Bishop Noel Jones. Everything. And that's the God's honest truth. And when I heard it, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything but cry. You know, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this day. And it's here. And I just tell God, I'm ready. And I won't let you down. Because a lot of people get to where they really and truly been working all their life to get to, and they mess it up. How do you go from not doing drugs to doing every drug? How do you go from not drinking to drinking up everything? You know, I don't understand that. I don't want to be that person that people like, mm, you got it and messed it up. No, I'm not, I don't want to let myself down. I don't want to let my, my, my family down. 
and I'm trying to leave a legacy. You know, that's that's my thing. I got four grandkids, believe it or not. I have four four kids and four grandkids, and I want to be able to leave them something. And I think that's what our culture should should think about doing, because that's what all the other other cultures do. They live off their grandparents' money from years and years and years, and that's what I want to do. I want to be able to leave my family a legacy. Yeah, uh, uh, something that they can be proud of. You know, and that's that's what I want. I want to be able to go back to my hometown, and people are proud. It's not a be. It's, it's not. It's never about them kissing my butt or anything like that, stroking my ego. I just want people to be proud. And I remember, like some years ago, I know some guys that you know been in that life, and you know they want to get out that life. But the one thing that I love is they came up to me and be like, "Hey, man, I'm proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't you know the streets and stuff? It's no place for you. Even though I've never been in anything like that because." It was like scared straight. It's like scared straight of my parents and not wanting to let them down. And that's what I live by. Vince Ward. Yes, sir. On the rise and grind. Rise and grind. Thank you for being with realurbannews.com. Thank you for having me. That's all right. That's a lot.